Hi, my name is Clint Wall at Auburn University and I work in the Aubies lab. Today we're going to be looking at different methods of mixing sugar syrup and feeding your bees. I hope you enjoy. At some point during your beekeeping operation, you're going to find it necessary to feed your bees. This could be the reasons that you're trying to add additional weight to the colony so they have stores to get through the winter, or you might need them to build up in the spring, draw out new comb, or you're just trying to encourage that queen and expand the colony. Either way, there is going to come a time where you want to add additional carbohydrates to the colony. Today we're going to be mixing a one-to-one -one sugar syrup. I find that that works really well to stimulate the colony. It's very good for drawing out comb. And as long as there's enough bees in the colony to render that sugar syrup down into usable honey, it should be fine. However, if you feel that it's more of an emergency situation or where real weight needs to be added to the colony, you may want to add a two to one ratio so that you're adding more sugar with less water, hence the bees have to work far less hard to get that into a usable form. There's a lot of different feeders out there on the market. I'm going to go over some of the pros and cons of each, but there's more out there than I can probably show you in this video. One of the ones we use the most here at, at Auburn is an in-hive one and a half gallon Man Lake feeder. I quite like this one. You can see here, this is a one gallon feeder and this is the one and a half. Some of the negatives to this is you have to open the colony in order to inspect it and fill with sugar syrup. Another thing is you're going to have to remove two frames. And if you're going to remove two frames, in my opinion, I'd rather get one and a half gallons of sugar syrup as opposed to one. And the one and a half gallon fits in that two frame slot a little tighter, so there's less dead space and you're less likely to get buildup of comb. One of the negatives to these things is they are a little bit of a drowning machine, especially this style here, even though they have a ladder that they is on the side walls, it really doesn't do the trick. And a weak colony is really prone to um, a lot of drowning with these open style feeders. We install a piece of hardware wire on the inside and we find this really solves the issue of drowning. It gives them lots of surface area to walk on and that's been a good upgrade to these units. And if I was going to buy more of these, I would do the same. Man Lake does offer the cap and ladder system which we use on our one and a half gallon feeders. It's really good. It's got two pieces that you have to add and three rubber bands and then these tubes they offer access without the risk of drowning. And we get very little drowning with these cap and ladders. It's a good system, it prevents drowning. The downside is you got two more pieces, three more pieces of hardware to deal with. These rubber bands tend to break. Hive beetles also love the nooks and crannies of this thing. But it is a good feeder and it holds a lot of syrup. We've talked about the in-hive feeder, and I guess now I'll talk about what could be rendered bucket feeding or jar feeding, but effectively it's about applying the sugar syrup to the top of the colony, having a hole for access, and then the vacuum that's created when this container is inverted allows for the bees to uh, get to the sugar syrup through these little holes. This is a really good system. I mean, some of the pros are you don't have to open the colony, you don't have to open the colony to inspect it. You don't have to open the colony to, to add additional sugar syrup. On the negative, these things can get blown off in a storm event. They can be attacked by possums, raccoons, or other critters that just want to get at that sugar. And you also have to put a hole in your lids in order to allow access. As you can see in this migratory lid, we've had to drill a hole and we've also had to drill an additional hole through the inner cover. But once the hard work's done, you've got something that'll last for life as far as an access point. You will have to cover it during times of the year when you don't want a hole in the top of your colony. Another feeder that we brought here to look at is the hive top feeder. These are really good as far as carrying capacity. I think you can get as much as four gallons in here. They do offer screens to try to prevent drowning, but in my experience, bees will always find a way, and so it isn't uncommon to see some drowning in these tubs. Sometimes it's through bees getting through a, a space and coming in from the top, but I think still there's 
chance for bees to drown even with this wire mesh. So the addition of something like straw or some other float can help to prevent that drowning. It's a lot of sugar syrup to add to a colony. It can be a little awkward if you're trying to do a colony inspection and there's still sugar syrup in here. And another negative is if the colony is not up to consuming all that sugar syrup, you can get fermentation and then you just have a bit of a mess on your hands to clean up. Another issue I've experienced with these is on the underside, you can get a tremendous amount of burr comb. They will just take the sugar syrup directly here and create all kinds of burr comb on the inside of this space. Well, now we're at the point where we're gonna be mixing up some sugar syrup to feed the bees. I'm gonna show you the one-to-one -one recipe that we're currently using. Depending on the size of your operation, you may need a little or a lot of sugar syrup. I'll demonstrate a no measure method that'll produce five gallons, but if you got more than 20 colonies and you're using a gallon, a gallon and a half feeder, then you might need to mix in bulk. I'll demonstrate the no measure method first. The most important ingredient for this is hot water. And we've got a good steady supply of it here. And what I'm gonna do is I've got a five gallon bucket and a 25 pound bag of sugar. And those are the only two measurements I need. One to one is a pretty simple ratio. Water weighs eight pounds, three gallons of water weighs 24 pounds, and we're gonna add 25 pounds of sugar. We wanna add just enough water to get the sugar in there. And then once the sugar's in, all we have to do is fill up the bucket. One 25 pound bag of sugar will mix five gallons of one to one syrup. Once you got it in there, you'll just have to find some way to mix it. I use my boat oar. When the water's good and hot, it doesn't take long. And I can feel already that's dissolved. Now I can mix that a little bit more, but for the purpose of the video, I'll just go ahead and leave that. We can now just put a lid on this, and once it cools off, it's ready to go into the colony. The next thing I'll demonstrate is what we feel is a clever way of mixing sugar in bulk. To do this, we've got a good source of hot water, and we've taken an old trolling motor and modified it to fit on the barrel. And all we've got to do is add, for this case, we have 15 gallons of water and we're gonna add five bags of sugar. And then the trolling motor does all the work. Sometimes when we're doing this on a sunny day, the bees can get a little nosy. But a day like today, we don't have that problem. Give that a few minutes of stir and it'll be ready to go.
For us, we use this large tote on the truck in order to get the sugar syrup out to the bees. To get it out of that barrel into the tote, we just have a simple sump pump that will drop into the barrel and it'll move the product nicely into that tote. Either way that you mix, the important thing is to have the right ratio of sugar to water and to have a good hot water source nearby because that just makes the job so much easier. Now that you've mixed up your sugar syrup and got it in a container that's manageable for you, all that's left to do is get it out to your colonies. So whether you're transferring it in a five gallon jug or using a one gallon jug to pour it into jars or top feeders, or if you're like us and using an industrial pump to move gallons of sugar syrup, the important thing is that you've already done everything that needs to be done in order to get the sugar syrup to the bees. And now that you know why to feed, how to mix, and maybe a different selection of feeders to use, you should be ready to go out and feed your bees. And I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you.